you got to be determined to win. Period. It's just like with an NFL team. They don't quit because a player decides that he don't want to play no more. A NFL player don't fumble the ball and then say they're going to quit football. No, they still make millions when they fumble the ball. So you're going to make mistakes on this journey, but you can still make money. I'm 30 years in. I still make mistakes. And I'm still making money. Because I decided that I'm going to win a championship. Period. No matter what happens. I try to check two boxes now in my life. I try to make money and do good by people. You know what I mean? I want other people to benefit from the things that I'm doing. So if I can do that, that that that's that's my mission in life. I'm a king in Africa, Cleveland, Ohio, um, real estate investor, 32 years in the game, uh, restaurant tour, and all around investor. Always looking for the next um, investment with my money, hustler. Well, I can, if I can't say nothing else, I can guarantee you this. Literally, fear is the biggest obstacle between successful people and unsuccessful people. So if you're scared, go get a job. In real estate, you can go in 100% confident, man. It's simple as that, bro. Because the, the key is buying the deal. Don't, don't, don't buy a piece of real estate trying to create the deal. The day that you buy it, it needs to be worth more than what you're paying for it. If you do that, you can never lose. You can never go wrong, bro. So whatever the deal is, do your research, have somebody run the comps, go and look at it, make sure it don't, you know, whatever work is needed, you, you prepare for that, you know what it is. Do the numbers. If the numbers make sense, it's a good deal, but it got to be a good deal from when you buy it. So do your do your due diligence and pull the trigger, man. I appreciate that. All right, I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay. I've always been like one of the go-to guys that people depend on for information. I've always been kind of um, ahead of the pack with getting knowledge and executing on that knowledge, so people are you know use me to get the pros and the cons on the moves that they're gonna make, and that's fine because it's something I'm passionate about. I love talking about business. I love talking about investments i love talking about the economy you know i love talking about financial literacy I, I love having those conversations and i feel like i'm blessed to be able to have it with people on a day-to-day -day basis that's what helped me um stay in line and stay in tune and sharpen my sword on an everyday basis so but with social media when, once i got on social media that became um it went to a whole nother level so not only do I, I I'm, I'm having those conversations with people I already know, but now I'm getting them DMs every day. You know what I mean? And people just want to ask questions or want to join the team or just want to ask about different issues that they're going through in their life with real estate or business or investments or whatever. Jack, a friend of mine just bought this building. She wanted me to take a second look at it, see how much, what type of investment she needs to make in it. So I normally don't do this, but she's my dentist. So I'm doing a favor. Maybe she'll give me a discount on some teeth cleaning.
this is unreal. That nobody's broken this building yet. This is unbelievable. She got a winner right here. What she paid for it, she bought it at the auction. I can't believe this copper is still here. That's unbelievable. The electrical is still here, so they haven't broken in it yet. But it's crazy that she don't have to build a secured. So I'm gonna make sure that she gets secured like right now, ASAP. They haven't damaged. She still got utilities on in here. What's up? Hey, Keith. All right. You sitting down or standing up? Sitting down. Do I need to be? <laughs> yeah. Nah, you need to be standing up. You don't need to sit down. I got really good news for you. Okay. This was a great buy. It wasn't great. It was a really, really good buy. It's not a bad property at all. But I'm telling you right now, you so lucky that nobody have broken in this property yet. You need to get alarm system over here like yesterday. I'm telling you, whatever you need to do, you need to get alarm on this building like yesterday. Okay. I don't even know how that's possible, how it's been empty this long and they haven't vandalized it. And I will hire security to be sleeping here tonight to make sure because you got so much copper in this place, it's crazy. Okay, let me call the guy right now. Who do you use? Uh, Ellery. Ellery. DJ Ellery, son. All right, well, give him a try. If he can, I'll give you some other people. You need to pay him whatever you need to pay him to put alarm on the building. So get it on the front door, get it on the back door, all the windows on the ground floor, get it covered. You know what I mean? Because you, that's going to be your money. You in a really, really good situation now. It's not going to cost you a lot to get this building up and running at all. Okay. But I don't even, I don't know how you got here, but it's unbelievable. It's, it's a blessing. Where, where do you want me to um, take this key at? Because I'm leaving here now. My car is on the chagrin, and I'm going to grab oh, something to eat. Come, if you're coming towards my way, uh, you said Leon's chagrin. My car is on Leon's chagrin. But when I leave there, I'm going to grab something to eat um, on Warrensville, uh, uh, Warrensville and chagrin. Okay. Well, just send me the location or the whatever you just said. All right. Just send it to me. I'll come there. All right, the cool. Alarm. All right, good. You need to have them over here. I mean, you're in, a, you're in a really good situation right now. It's not bad at all. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, when I get there, can we talk more about it, or are you going to be at dinner, or what are you doing? Nah, nah, it's cool. I mean, you just really need to get it secured. That's the main thing. That's your first step. Get it secured ASAP. That's what I would do if you need. I, if I was you, I would hire a property management company and let them handle it. You can, you know, I refer you to a property manager. Let them go ahead and get it. At least get a couple of units up and running and get it rented, where you at least have a couple bodies in here over the winter. The, the lady that uh, the con, whatever, remember the one I told my realtor or whatever. I think mm -hmm. she does the property management. Okay. What about the what about the work and stuff that she? Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I really can't help you with that. I can be, try to send you some people like my property management company uses. They do, they'll do the work for you. They'll handle it. It's just a referral. But if you got a property manager, she got contractors that they can do the work. Even if you just do one or two units just to get some bodies in here, I would do that as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Yeah. I'll see you in a minute. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, don't forget to tell me the, the place. All right. I'm going to look it up send it to you. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm Takara. I'm a mom. I'm a serial entrepreneur, a business consultant, and a real estate mogul. I've been in real estate for about 21 years and what started me in real estate was graduating from college with a bachelor's in social work, a master's in education and public administration, and a ton of student loans. I don't know about this house. What you mean? I don't know. I just thought about it. I just don't know about this house. I mean, I'm, I'm not being ungrateful, but I just feel like, why didn't you give me nothing in like selling somewhere? Alongside with 
graduating from college with three degrees, I was a teen mom. I had my daughter at the age of 15 and I wanted to teach my daughter something that I was not taught and that was about generational wealth. I lost my dad at the um, age, early age, and my dad owned a lot of real estate. I used to ride with him to collect rent, um, property management, and when he passed away, I didn't receive anything. So that was always, that stuck in my head that with my daughter, especially being a teen mom, and being the first successful person and entrepreneur in my family, I wanted to create some type of generational wealth for her and show her estate planning, show her um, how to set up for generations after me, um, after her, just, you know, create generational wealth. Do you realize with the blessing that you're passing up? I'm not trying to make this an argument. No, but... I'm just saying that's an ungrateful <sighs> Here we go. Like, I mean, and then you wait two months later to tell me that? I was like, what? My feelings was hurt. Like, what do you mean? What legitimate reason that you I don't do know. I have? just don't want to be over in that area. Well, it's rental property. When you, what you got to go over there and do? You um, sent I the contractor over, over there rent, to do I the have work. To go and... One, I was disappointed that I, you know, I've taught her along the way and she's watched my journey in real estate, the hustle and the bustle and the success, the ups and downs. And I felt as though she should have been honored to receive that property as a gift. And it was a, be a, it was a head start in life alongside the business that she owns, an additional source of income. She asked for a Rolex and instead I gifted her with the deed. Okay, tell me what reason, what legitimate reason that you I don't do know, I just don't want to be over in that area. Well, it's rental property. When you, what you got to go over there and do? You um, send I the have contractor to over there rent. to do I the have work. To go and I don't, I just don't okay, know. Okay, if you're getting sick, I don't know, I'm just uncomfortable about the whole situation. I'm just uncomfortable. No, I think that's, you're very spoiled and you're ungrateful. Oh, wow, really? Yes, that's very spoiled and ungrateful. You need more That's why I just can't even bother to even say anything about it. Disregard even acts. I'm gonna do my hair. I gotta get out of here. I'm not. Yeah. This is too much. <laughs> See, I'm saying, listen to them. You do, would you? If your okay, mom bought I'll you a house for your birthday to create more income for you, don't y'all get I just didn't want to be in that shop? area. I just don't you're not in that area. You're somebody. Like you're oh, it's about to turn into a whole. Things happen. Let me hurry to get her out of here. I'm just saying. Oh, things happen in Beachwood. Things happen in Shaker. Things happen in Salem. I'm saying what you're saying. You have a property that you can hold forever. You can pull equity out of it. You can take this property and use it as rental property, short-term housing. Um, you know, the, the, the fad now is Airbnb. Um, or just hold it in your portfolio and add to your portfolio. And with that in your portfolio, you can buy as many watches as you want. Generational wealth, multiple streams of income. I mean, I'm sure, don't it get slow here? You, at some point, you're going to get tired of standing on your feet. And real estate is well, the way to go. You always have real estate. That's your you, retirement plan. Can you try to just look into a different area? No, I'm not. Don't, the only child syndrome is spoiled. Do you know the reason that the fundamentals as to the reason why I did that? You asked for a Rolex. I told you I'm going to get you I a said property, anything that will make me some, some money. income, and you can go buy your own material items. You're talking about a house that would generate you twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month. Retirement. Retirement. And then she could pull equity out of it, rent it out. Yep. There's so many things you could do with the property. Do you realize in today's market the prop the way the property values are, the inflation? So you the price that I got this property for. And what you could do with it, you're winning. I put you in a winning situation. No mortgage, free and clear. I wish my parents would have been able to put me in a position of gifting me a property to generate income for the rest of my life. And guess what? I had to figure it out on my own. So I started my first property with a loan, a mortgage. Okay, let's call Chuck so we can get this thing rolling. Yeah. I'm just saying, but I don't want to okay, force you into something that you're not ready for. Okay, it just caught me off guard, the area. That's fine. I'm not being ungrateful. So can we please just call Chuck? You need Chuck? to go back and read The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I don't want to. Why not? Because i just rather go to Sean Williams and start buying paint. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just not about buying paint. It's also you're creating a new business. So it has to be ran as a business. True. 
uh, one thing, you may want to get a property manager. Guess what, if you get a property manager, then you don't have to go to the hood and pick up your rent. So property, maybe that's something you could consider if you're going to keep the property, paying the property manager 10% of what your earnings are after your bills. He needs to walk through with me so I know exactly what I'm working with, what I, I need to do. I did that with him. He created Okay, you did that. I didn't walk. walk through with him. I need to walk through with him because it's my money that's being spent. Okay. Today we're going to set up a time tomorrow, and I'm going to call Chuck. We're going to go through. We're going to create a contract with him. I'm gonna make sure you're good. We're gonna go through, pick out the colors of the paint, what needs to be done, create a budget, and we'll walk you through the whole process. And we're gonna do it during the day so you won't be scared. Mm -hmm. I got you. This is what I do. I mean, you've been watching me do this since she was a baby. This is what I do. This is my lane. I'm not gonna leave you. I want you to create generational wealth to keep it going with these properties, real estate, overall. Okay, I feel comfortable. So when you are gonna have a baby for the generation? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm shot. It's already shot. All right, I feel better now. All right, let me take this off. You done? Have a good Tuesday. Get the hell out of my chair. So you know, I'm gonna leave it in your hands. You call Chuck and set up the time. Just let me know what time to be there. And we okay. can do set, get everything going. Can we do dinner later? And no, you know what? <laughs> call and get a dumpster. I'm about to send you the guy's number. Oh, brother, text it to me. And call and get a dumpster. Tell him you're Takara's daughter. Um, no, tell me my partner. And you want a dumpster and give him the address. Okay. Mark, his name is Mark. Okay. All right, come on, I got another client. But I owe you. <laughs> Just help me with my house. I got you. All right. No, I got you. <laughs> Chuck. Okay, so here we go. I talked to Tanae, um today. She told me, nobody told me that um, she didn't want the house. So we talked about it and I told her the direction that we were going, to, going in and what the contingency plan was. Um, if we're going to get you over there tomorrow, we're going to go over everything and get started with the renovations on the property. I told her to order a dumpster and we're moving forward. So we need to see what's a good time for tomorrow to do a walkthrough. Don't hold no dumpster. I'm my truck. Don't hold no dumpster. You sure? Yeah, I got a box truck. Fuck you on a dumpster for. Okay. You got the doors open for me? You got the keys for upstairs. Well, let's go check out upstairs. Y'all cut the back already? No, we just about to get started. He told me to wait a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, tonight, come on. Let's do a field trip. Here we go. Frank? Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Been sick. You been sick? Been sick for a little while now. What's been going on with you? I've been calling you. I haven't gotten a call on my phone. What's your number? Did you change your number again? I got a text from the other day. What's going on with the rent that you're supposed to pay? Uh, I'm dealing with the... Uh, from the VA. The, uh, Commission. Well, you know, Frank, we went through the whole eviction okay. process. Oh, oh. <laughs> we went through the whole eviction process, and I gave you the opportunity to stay. And we were working things out, and you still haven't paid. So, you got somebody living in here? No, somebody comes by and takes care of me. Can I do a walkthrough? That yeah, was the no. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. What's going on? What, 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 what you working on? So um, yesterday I um, went out in the field and I delivered two three-day notices and I it didn't go well. So I, I made hold a decision. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It didn't go well. Hold on, hold on. It didn't go well at all. You delivered some notices? Yes, two. Wow. And it didn't go well. 
Why your property manager is not doing that? Well, I decided yesterday that I'm going to go with the property manager. It, it's I'm I, I'm going to go with the property manager. So what's been stopping you all these years from getting a control? Control and just hands on, and I just feel that I I have the time that that time could be devoted to other things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, looking for more properties. You know, researching more properties. Uh, shopping for more properties. Developing wow. classes, you know, completing some things on the to do list. Right. You know. right. So wow. I'm gonna go with uh, and just getting all the small the small calls, the complaints, you know, service calls. It don't even make yeah, sense. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah. But uh, today today was my my uh, I, I'm 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 at my end. Yeah, property manager is a must. Yeah. I haven't I haven't I've had property management for ten years now. I haven't been to eviction court in 10 years. I haven't had to interact with a tenant in eight years. They don't know me from Adam. Question, do you do still do walkthroughs for your property? I don't, do not personally. No? I let no. them do that. She okay. go on with her inspection report. And somebody from the team, I mean, she got a team now, so they go in and handle all that. Okay. So the only difference with me and the average investor in terms of maintenance issues or repairs, she do send it to me first to see if I want to handle it on my end or do I want her to have someone handle it. So basically, are you approving? Exactly, okay. but most of the time, 80% of the time, I have somebody on my end handle repairs or whatever it is. Okay. You know what I mean? The little things or the big things, I handle it. But sometimes I might just, I might call one of my guys and they are busy, so I have her Send somebody that's on her crew to do it. Somebody that she got. Okay, and that was an issue with me as well. How mm -hmm. I would I handle those issues? Yeah. If something will basically contact me. Yeah, can, exactly. You know, okay, exactly. So if it's a exactly. roofing issue, I can contact my roofer. Yeah, to, okay. yeah. It's okay. well worth that ten percent that they charge. It's well okay. worth it. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's just have them call you. Yeah. Over, give them a certain amount. Like so, for me, it's the property manager call. If it's over five hundred dollars, I need you to call me. And then most of the time, I'm gonna send my people under five hundred dollars. You can make the call and get it done. Uh -huh. But I understand the the mindset that you have, or like you want to control it. But your reason was different from mine. When I first started, I wanted to control it because I I wanted all of the money. You're right. So so I wanted to control it. Yeah, yeah, I wanted all the money. But to look back at it, it's funny as we as I'm doing the book and my guy asking me these questions. And I think about that, I'm like, dude, like that don't make no, that makes no sense. Like, why do you want to be a, a property? You, I wanted to be the property manager to save money. I want to get the property at a discount. I wanted the cheapest contractors to get to work at a discount. Like I'm buying, I was buying stolen material. Like I want everything. You can't get a discount at every Like, no, nah, I don't make sense. And then here's another thing that, and he was like, he, he never read a real estate book that talked about this. I was like, you know what? I started making more money when I stopped buying stolen material. He's like, what? He started laughing. He's like, bro, I did the same thing when I, I did my office in, in you know, in New York. I was, yeah. I bought hot material. I said, man, I stopped buying stolen material. Mm -hmm. I can hurt with that. I like, started making like, more I'm not money interested. I stopped dealing with un yeah. unqualified so, contractors. Yeah. You know. it's, it's, it's more efficient. It's, that's what it's all about, it's efficiency. The, we, all, we all agree and understand the most valuable asset is time. Absolutely. How we spend our time is what's gonna bring more money to the bottom line, as simple as that, period. Time is money. Time is absolutely money. And, and this is beyond all the time, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. This is a team sport. Period. For real. Manager is yeah, the, the bigger team. your team, yes. the more money you can bring to the table. Period. As simple as that. I tell people the property management is part of the starting five. If you want to win a championship in real estate, the property managers is part of your start. It's one of the starting five on your team. Yeah. I'm done. Property management. I'm glad you woke yes. up. Yes. Yes. Oh, like, yes. Like, yes. I can't do it anymore. Now, now my property manager, I would say I have to be involved a little more than the average because she's hardcore. So Wow. Now, okay, if someone needs some flexibility as to paying their rent, you know. See, so I'm, I have a, a, a different look at it. She's like straight, they got to go. On the third day, Jerry. So, but, 
Well, for me, I look at, I give people seniority. How long have they been there? How long have they been paying rent on time? How many times have they been late? Those people, they get more seniority in my books, right? They get more flexibility in my book. But the second month, the third month, you just moved in, now you late? No, nah, that's, I so agree, you let they the gotta go. manager know up front, hey, this person is, yeah. stands right here. Yeah, she usually she usually lets let me know before she delivered three day notes. Okay. Like I just bought a property at the auction, it just transferred. So the normal practice is we give a welcome letter to the tenants, but she also wanted to deliver 10 day notice. But if I'm, I, I'm looking at it from a tenant standpoint, if I'm in the house and I've been living in this house for three years, paying somebody else, and now all of a sudden I get a letter that says, oh, it's a new owner, right? And I haven't heard from the old owner, but then that's fine. I'm gonna read the letter, that's a welcome letter. But then right with that notice, I got a 10 day notice to move or to vacate the property. You know, you put me on the straight offensive. So I'm saying deliver the welcome letter first, Give them an opportunity to contact you and talk to you about how we move forward. Okay. If they don't do that in a timely manner, then deliver the, the letter. Step. You know what I mean? The next step. And that's our normal practice. Beyond Win, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, real estate investor, author, coach, etc. People are always ask me, why do I hire a personal trainer when I'm already fit? Here's another reason. Some days I don't want to think about what exercises I'm going to do. So I pay somebody that this is what they do. So I ain't got to think about that. I can stay focused on the things that's going to bring me more income. More income. I can focus on income producing activities and I hire a personal trainer that focus on training. So I could just be free. It's a ritual. Like things don't flow right if I'm not working out. It's like things are not in alignment if I'm not working out. Like like that, that's my go to. That's my therapy. You know, uh, yeah. And then you, you feel great. Like you work out like you like you you feel great, look good. And so that's one of those things that I, I'll never give up loved ones that I lost, right? But my mom, she's my uncle, my auntie, friends. They can't get back in the game and put up no points. They can't get back in the game and win a championship. So, so we gonna quit, like we in the game, right? We have an opportunity every day to win a championship in our life and we gonna quit. We got the baton, right? They passed the baton to us. We have a responsibility to lead our team to a championship. still make money. I'm 30 years in. I still make mistakes and I'm still making money because I decided that I'm going to win a championship. Period. No matter what happens. Whether it's going to the detention home, going to state prison, going to federal prison, I was determined to win. Period. Not quitting, not giving up, using everything as fuel to keep me going and get me to the top. So the Cleveland infield training with the pros how it actually came about, I had an idea one morning, I woke up, had an idea to invite a couple people to Cleveland and for them to shadow me as I rehab a property. And so I just got on the live. I didn't have anything mapped out. I didn't even have the name at the time. I got on the live and said, hey, I got a project coming up and I'm gonna take five people and let them shadow me from A to Z as I vet out the contractors, as we walk through the price, through, through the property, discuss the prices, and I'm gonna take five people at $1,000 a piece. The first five people that cash out me $1,000, uh, like that's it. So I just put it out there, didn't have nothing lined up. It was just, it was one of those things where I caught, the coach gave me a play and I ran the play. So a few days later I woke up and then I got to thinking about how I could add more value to the people. And then I reached out to my home girl, cousin Nita. We met up and 
I was, I was asking her, uh, like, you know, the different things I can, I can add, add to add value to the people and basically want her to be a part of it. Share information and resources with people that can really help them win. Like, because it was like, I'm doing it like in real life. So if I invite them here, well, like they can see it, like they can see, you know, they can see it. We can go through the process. I could connect them with the resources that they need. So that's where, that's where it came from. Like showing people like this is real because where I come from is like, I never really imagined like this, like my life was, was left. Like I'm, I was married to the streets. And so for this to actually be real for, you know, to where you can, you could flip properties and you could make, like, you could buy a property for, 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 for $20,000 and, you know, you rehab and then you can make, you know what I mean, $20,000 or $30,000 or you could buy a property and not do nothing to it and you can make $20,000 or $50,000. That's like, wow. So I know most of the people that come from where I come from, they don't believe that because I didn't believe it. So when I closed my first deal, it was like I walked around with the check in my pocket for a month, like a month, right? Minimum a month to show my friends that, bro, we ain't got to risk our life no more, risk our freedom. Like, this is real. So that tells me that you can still make money if you marry the game and have kids with it, a.k.a. commit. <laughs> <laughs> You ready to rock and roll? Bro, bro, welcome to Cleveland. Hey, yeah, run the play, man. Ready to run the play, y'all. All I mean, that's good. Nice to meet you as well. That's good. Nice to meet you as well. Hey, listen, things gonna happen, they not gonna go as planned, but it's like being in a Super Bowl. Like, you don't quit, you just adjust. I heard Kobe talk about that. So, with the start of this day, you know, we had two buses, one bus was super late, and I explained to the people, listen, on this real estate journey, if you serious, you're gonna have to marry the game and have kids with it, right? That means be committed. And as problems arise, you gotta adjust. We get to the property, I forgot the keys at home, right? But we got to adjust. We never backing out. Like, we're going to adjust and have a great day. Watch me. How many people are afraid of wet basements? Okay, Come on, tell the truth. If you're walking, That's listen, why. I know somebody, somebody not telling the truth because I got a lot of properties, a lot of deals, because people were afraid of the wet basement. They thought that the foundation was bad. When in actuality, the foundation wasn't bad. Like Nita said, most of the basements in Cleveland are damp. Most of the properties that I buy, they have wet basements. Here's a couple of reasons why a basement will be damp or wet in Cleveland. One, like Nita said, the driveway is pitched towards the basement instead of away from the basement. If the driveway is pitched towards the basement, towards the foundation, where the water going? We basically ran a no huddle, right? I run a lot of no huddles. No huddle basically mean, like you know, for, the, for the people that don't know, you just, you just tapping in. I use these sports analogies as it pertains to my life, like run the f***ing play, uh, running no huddles. Running no huddles basically mean it's not mapped out or planned out. It's just like right off the top of the dome and knowing that it's going to work out. And however it work out, I know that I can, I can fix it and I'm cool with however it work out. So that specific class, the last class, the last Cleveland infield training with the pros, that was the most people that I ever had at a class. It was two bus loads of people. So we had about 100 people. The normal classes that I was doing before the last class, it was about 40 people. So that's one bus. So you got two buses. So 100 people can't fit in a house. So it was like, okay, we have to do something different because 100 people can't fit in a house. So we broke them up into to groups. So I was outside and I was basically going over the exterior. The exterior, uh, cost of repairs. Cause Anita was inside in the basement going over the mechanicals, electrical, plumbing, heating, and then Shawan with Pruitt Investments, that's my general contractor, he was in 
the, the kitchen and going over like the kitchen and the, the kitchen, dining room, bathroom, going over those things. And then every 20 minutes they rotated. The class was amazing. Like the people loved it. The people said that they didn't expect to get everything that they got. They felt, they said we over delivered. Like a few of the people when, when we, we talked to them, they said they felt like they owed me money when they left. It, 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 you know, it's like, even when I run no huddles, right? When I run no huddles and, or come up with programs, I know that I'm going to give 100%. So it was like, like, what's the worst that can happen? I know that I'm intentional about bringing as much value as possible to the people and helping the people get what they signed up for. So how can I go wrong? If I decide I'm gonna do a class this weekend, just pop up out of nowhere, it's, it's this price, it's like, I know that I can help you get to the closing table. My intention is to help you win. I can help you win. So how can I go wrong? Okay, the bus don't show up. I can still help you win. We ain't got no bus. But we're going to figure it out, and I'm going to still help you get to the closing table. That's it. That's life. The people that get to the top, the people that are the most successful, they focus on solutions, period. Where you can tie into the same lake, the same water, <laughs> for literally <laughs> same 10 winter. cents on the dollar, same winter, 10, 20 cents on the dollar, live a better life with the same effort and energy that you putting out to hustle and work, whatever y'all do in terms of work. I'm sure the same jobs that I don't understand it. I really don't. I'm always like my people in Cali. I'm like, why are you paying 2,900 a month for 700 square feet? And you can get a fucking 7,000 square foot house here for the same. Like oh, something. There, man. All right. Yeah. This is my uh, my number one real estate agent here in Cleveland. So, my brother's from Canada. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he my agent and we grew up together, but he's not the normal real estate agent either. <laughs> <laughs> I get Why busy. Yeah, he's an investor busy. too. Oh, okay. That's yeah. good. That's what you want. For sure. Sometimes. <laughs> until he step on my toes as his client. <laughs> you know, the shit that he shouldn't be sending to me, he'd be buying it himself. <laughs> it's enough all That's of us, the right? problem. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get me a hellfire. Yeah. So, so, so the good thing is, you know, when we go to some of these projects, we, we figure it out. He had climbed on my shoulders a couple of times. I had to boost him up through the window <laughs> to get in. When other investors take the keys out the lockbox, <laughs> we still make some happen. They think they're going to stop something. Right. They can't stop nothing. Right. And the means necessary. Yeah. We're going to get in. Yeah. So we can go in and check it out. Uh, yeah, to start, he was just trying to get the plumbing and the electric done first. So that's for the salt, the gas line, then the plug is for the microwave. While I'm doing the microwave like next the to the um to the stove on the left hand side. I just gotta get built and be creative because I had already ordered the, the cabinets for that. Right? So we just gonna take the, the drawer, take the cabinet face, put it upside down, turn the drawer upside down, have the drawer on the bottom, and then build the cavity for the microwave. So I had this vision on the, the house that I'm doing right now. I wanted this uh, island to go in the middle of the kitchen. And I specifically wanted the stove with the, uh, the range hood above it, hanging over the island. I wanted the microwave to go under the cabinet or in um, recessed in the cabinet. It gives it a more luxury look. Unfortunately, my cabinet company didn't have that microwave cabinet. So I had to be creative. I went on and ordered the base cabinets and decided to um, re reconstruct the cabinet to fit the microwave to make it look um, very unique and professional. And like, you know, I bought the cabinet like that. So I went on and made the, um, bought the cabinet, took it to my, um, my Amish um, contractor, which is the best in the business. He's a master cabinet maker anyway. And once I drew out the plans and showed him what I wanted to do, he was able to actually um, bring it to life. So we actually took that cabinet apart, took one of the, the doors off the cabinet. It was a French door cabinet. Um, we took one of the doors off. We took both of the doors off, made the opening cavity for the microwave to fit in perfectly, and then took one of those drawers and added it to the actual drawer that was on the top of the cabinet. So now they have a pot and pan drawer on the bottom of the microwave. This was the bedroom. Yeah. 
Yeah, this was the bedroom. Yeah, that's so I and that was the kitchen. So we opened this door, split the bedroom and have a huge walk-in closet and a huge bathroom. Yeah, I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do um sky slidings on each side of the mirror right there, and then I'm gonna do two uh no, I'm actually gonna do one light chandelier. So this actual property was a, um, a, a situation I loaned a, a guy some money, another real estate investor. Um, he wanted to buy the house to renovate it and do whatever he was going to do. And I just loaned, it was supposed to be a simple cut and dry. I loaned him some money. He paid me back within a year, whatever he made, fine. And mine was a fixed interest rate. Four months into the deal, he decided to throw me the key, said he was in over his head, he had other projects going on. So the property landed back um, in my hands and that's fine. Because of the area that the property was in, that, that large mirror area, it was very rare to be able to have the opportunity to get a multi-family house in that area. And when you do, you have to move quickly on it. The prices are um, really strong. So I got the property back. Unfortunately, I had tenants in the property. Um, I offered the tenants three, um, 90 days. They don't have to pay any rent, save their money and relocate because I wanted to renovate the property to um, sell to a homeowner. Um, that was the original goal. The people on the first floor, they took my offer and ran with it. They was gone by 92 days. They were gone. The um, lady upstairs, she didn't, um, she didn't care about my offer. She wasn't having that. She said, yeah, I'll stay here 90 days. And when the 90 days came, she said, yeah, I think I need another 90 days. Um, I had no choice but to give it to her after those 90 days. She decided she needed another 90 days. So she decided to stay and it was, um, I went through the whole eviction process. I never, in my, and I've been doing this 30 years, I never personally went through a situation like this when evicting the tenant. Um, it took eight months to evict her the attorney that I had going through the process of eviction, she said she had never went through anything like this. My property manager had never went through anything like this. Um, we even got to the point that I offered the lady, even before to go, to try to avoid all the legal BS and going to eviction court, I, or, I offered the lady cash for keys, give her some cash, just give me the keys and move out. Um, she accepted the offer twice and then two days later she decided that she wasn't going to accept the offer. Um, it, it was that I, I personally been doing evictions for 30 years and I've never had to hire a private server. If you don't know what that is, you actually hire somebody that's certified from the courts that's willing to go to court and testify that they hand delivered this tenant this letter. I actually had to hire a server twice to go out to track the lady down to actually put the eviction notification in her hands because the courts kept kicking it back out. But hey, that's that's the way it goes. It's not gonna be a home run every time. You know, it's ups and downs. You know, it's, it's gonna be some smooth transactions. There's gonna be some bad ones, but you gotta stick with it. And if you do enough of it, it'll balance out. And I definitely do enough of them. So um, that's the deal. Uh, you niggas that fumbled the bag. Damn dag, that shit embarrassing. Yes, we the freshest and stay stepping out like adultery marriages. How could you ever compare to us? We getting money, etc. There ain't no getting ahead of us. Foot on their neck, we ain't letting up. You bitches done fuck uh. the bag. Now you out here looking serious. Gang goes, 30 bang goes, and that's on period. Most of you hoes is delirious, wanna be friends, ain't feeling it. Small talk and get you dog walk, ain't money, ain't hearing it. I got the keys, 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 pull up with each. Yes, he be flexing if any discretion, bitch. We got receipts from I don't know. It's been about two to three years since I've actually done a renovated uh, residential property. I've been focusing more on the commercial. So I bought the house for about 64 grand. I put about 120 plus in the renovations. I put it on the market at 274 and we got three offers in less than 24 hours and I accepted the offer for 285. So another one down it took about uh seven months on this one so it was a little slower than normal but my guys haven't been in it like they used to in a while so hopefully um we back on track
Well, it's a little unusual in uh, in the late, you know, October to be seeing yellow jackets, but we had some yellow jackets in the uh, in the vents over there for us. So they had a few stings for me in the in the back of the neck, and uh, but no, they, it looks like they're getting in through the uh, the crawl vents. They're crawling up the side of the wall, getting into the crawl vents, which is real unusual. Okay. He's got gray squirrel and the flying squirrel. And unlike his name, it doesn't actually fly, but it does glide. And with a big house like this, they'll get on the top of the roof and they'll actually kind of spread their arms. You can see the, the uh, skin up under their arms will catch wind and they can actually glide for quite a long ways, about like a bat would fly. It's a very interesting uh, infestation, if you want to call it that. It's the cutest infestation ever, if you got to have one. Which um, I know the, uh, the, the punch thing, it's what happened. Why are you walking like that? My legs hurt. I've been working out. You think I'm lying? Be on that shit right now. All right, Mom. Hey, I ain't lying. I, I, think I believe you don't work out. I mean, you don't do it. So what's your boy Kanye West, man? The racist brother. That's your brother. That's your brother. I'm surprised. I know you with everything you say. I thought I thought I was coming to get this, man. Oh, you no, know, you're not. How much? For you? We started five hundred. Man, brother, 3500 You told me you had 2000 for it. No, I didn't. I never told you that. Do the research. I'm getting it. Listen, look. It, it, it worked. Look. I just replaced every last one of them, Brian. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Drop it. Of course it works. Man. All right. It's mine. We can take all the You can't put it on your truck? No. Oh. You oh. can't lift it. They'll come. It's a flatbed tow truck. I just want to get it to dry to Chris' house every day. <laughs> that's how I, that's how I got it in the, um, the shop. To replace all the batteries and shit. You said you was gonna dry this shit for us. Hell. Nah, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about uh, um, getting a house setter. This is the first time I've ever considered that. Getting a house setter. Somebody that's actually gonna be here on the regular and shit. What you need. Well, the winter coming now, so I'm gonna be here on the regular. Oh, but oh, once oh, the you, summer kick in, so you're about to be here this winter. I'm gonna be here as 1, well, not every day, all day, but I'm gonna be here majority of my time over the winter for sure. I'm gonna be here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For a month, I'm gonna rent a house in Florida, between um, from Christmas to like the uh, third week of January. We rent a crib down there and kissing me. Bother than that, I'm gonna be here. We gon' put this work in, all I spit is fire, bitch, I'm earth wind. We paper chase, cause money make the earth spin. Before you purchase burgers and purses and get the splurging, make sure you make investments that's worth it and watch it surface. We never not working, we winning, I found my purpose. Can I do a walkthrough? That was no. Get out of my house, get out of my house plans today was to serve two three-day notices, one to apartment one and one to apartment two. Apartment one for non-payment of rent, a portion of the rent, and apartment two was unsanitary conditions. Apartment two was Frank. Frank, I spoke to him, um, he has some issues. Um, a portion of, rent, of Frank's rent is paid and another portion is not. The agreement was he, I was gonna be flexible with him, but he was gonna maintain the outside of the building, meaning like not to cut the grass, but I have a landscaper for that, that I contract with, but to make sure there's no paper, um, you know, the bottles looking at the area, you know, all the litter. He was just to keep it clean, you know, sweep up the halls. Uh, he's not doing that. So, you know, I told him you need to pay that portion to me. He will not return any phone calls. So I came in today to do an inspection. I gave him a, a 24 to 48 hour notice. So I saw that there is some issues going on with some a little leakage in the back of the building. So I'm gonna have that repaired. And I'm also gonna have his back bedroom painted and his carpet cleaned in his back bedroom. And in a week, I'll have that done. And his return is he's gonna make sure that his unit is clean when I do a walkthrough again, an inspection of the unit. And at that point, I will proceed if I want to proceed with a three-day notice in collection or we're going to start with a clean slate. Well, basically he was stating that he's been sick. Um, he doesn't have the money. Um, he's on a, he's a veteran. He's on a fixed income. So I understand that. Um, however, it does not mean that you're not supposed to pay your rent because when you qualify for this unit, you qualify it based upon your monthly earnings and his monthly earnings afforded him to be able to pay the 925 a month per rent. So tonight, you know the rules. 
kick first. Make sure you kick first. So if anything in here, or any people in here. You got your phone? Yes. So it's an ugly one. Your house don't look nothing like this. No, nothing I like this. Nothing. Hey, you got a gold man compared to this. As far as the renovation. So this is the kitchen. This is my first time seeing this house. Hardwood floors. Look how nice and big it is. Got a little buckling on the floor. Those are things you're looking for, but it's an older house. See that? You see that? Mm -hmm. It's like a wave. That could be the, um, the age of the house, the moisture. Look at the bathroom, so I'm gonna gut all this out. Not bad at all. All cosmetic. We got. So it's rare that you find a two family with three bedrooms. So you got one, two, three. You scared? No, I'm not scared. I'm going to go back to back. Let's see what you got. Some mice droppings, uh, raccoons. I don't see no roaches. Not a bad house at all. And again, go in and do the electrical, update the electrical, update the plumbing, new bathrooms. This right here rent easy eleven, twelve hundred dollars a month. Up and down. Plus they got a third floor. Easy. New windows. You see the new windows? New roof. Those are the things you look at. Those are your more expensive items in a renovation. Let's go check out the third floor. And I bought this out blind. So you see right there on the steps, so watch your feet. There's some raccoon droppings. I don't want to step in that. You can um you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to step in. I hear something up here, so I don't think we should go up here. But again, as I can see, just peeking up here, it's a bed, a full bedroom, a bathroom. So we got a three-family home, two bedrooms upstairs, a full kitchen. Mm. You hear something? It's a up nice there? little yeah. It's a nice little dollar. It's in a, a layer. I mean, a step. So it's not wet, but there's signs of moisture. We're going to look for the furnaces. I can get down there. Looking for the furnaces. We got two furnaces here. I don't know the condition. Mm, more than likely need replaced. We don't know if they work. Let's look for the electrical box. Remember I taught you that? We're going to look for the electrical box and see if it's upgraded. Let's see. Up, up, bang. New electrical boxes. That's a big expense. In the far corner, you see it? You see? What, the Glass lock window over here? New electrical box, yes. So remember I told you when you're going into a basement, you look for the furnaces, you look for the hot water tanks, you look for any moisture, and you look at the electrical box. You see those two electrical boxes? Those two are upgraded electrical boxes. So that's one less thing that I would have to do to this property in the renovation. Um, no possibly hot, no hot water tank? No, I don't see any hot water tank, so we probably stole them. So what you think? I feel much better. I'm confident. confident. Yeah. So you see how I go through these houses? I'm not scared. You know, there's nothing to be scared of. You're not scared of making money. I'm this, never this scared of making no money. Okay, well this is going to be... Uh, let's I'll go let to you the backyard. I'm not scared. Well, let's go. So I'm going to have all this cut down. I might left a car back here. 
So typically when someone leaves a car on your property, you have rights to the car. If you just let your house sit for a period of time, this is what will start happening. People will see that it's an abandoned home and they'll start dumping tires, rubber, old cars. It looks like someone dumped at some point um, a, a bunch of dirt. They'll start dumping on your unit. And guess what? You can't do anything about it. You're responsible for it. So when I start this process, once I close, I'll get the dumpster over here and get it started. Uh, I'll secure the property and I'll get it cleaned out. All right, so where are we at? Yeah, you said it <laughs> <laughs> This is a flat roof, mm -hmm. so it's gonna need maintenance over the winter time. I was thinking about they gotta make sure they're getting the snow off and all that right. stuff because that's probably how it got so bad. Like this, just because it's mm -hmm. flat, flat roof don't need maintenance. Got it. The floor, you know, so you can see wet marks and stuff like that, and then touch, touch up in there, and you'll be able to tell. But there's not nothing up in here. Some of it may look like water stains, but it's just like old stains. Got it. But this dry. So that's not leaking. You see? Mm -hmm. and then, oh, sorry, then right here. So I believe it's coming from the chimney. So today just coming to check the coming to check the progress of the exterior exterior paint, uh following up with the paint guy. Also coming to uh meet to get a quote for uh, the metal work and the gutters and uh, this is my guy that actually did did the roof so um, and the electrical electrical guy so we did the rough end on the electrical a few days ago and the electrical inspector is about to come out to sign off on the electrical after that we headed to the finish line fast uh, we gon' put this work in All I spit is fire, bitch, I'm earth wind We paper chase cause money make the earth spin Before you purchase burgers and purses and get the splurges Make sure you make investments that's worth it and watch it yeah, surface so this, this week, week six, week six Only thing we got left to do is the hardwood floors re, re, uh, re the hardwood floors By Sunday they'll be a wrap And uh, it did it Three bedrooms, one bath. The reason why I was able to do it in six weeks because I got a, I got a blueprint. I got a six week, six week blueprint. When I first started, it used to take me months to do properties. And the reason why it took me months because I didn't have a process and with contractors, if you don't have a process, they just gonna be running no huddles. And they gonna tell you, you haven't be done this week, you haven't be done next week. But when you have a, a, a process, and they know that you got a process, and they know that you know that, okay, it only take three days to do the rough end for the plumbing. It only take three days to do the rough end for the electricity. So when they know that you know that, they move different. Everybody stay on course. Like to, to paint the exterior of a house, let's just take, you know, take this house for example, just 1200 square feet. To paint the exterior, it's four days max. It's four days max to paint the exterior. To do the roof on a 1200 square foot house, that's one day, tear off and put back on, one day. To do all new gutters, that's a one day job, right? Uh, to do the windows is a, a one day job. Once you order them, it take about four weeks to get the windows, but that's a one day job. Uh, like I said, to do the electrical, just the rough end, that's like three days, three days max. Because you're not putting uh, fixtures in, you're just running your wire. You're running all your wire and you're not putting the fixtures in. That's three days. Rough end plumbing, about three days, four days, four days max. To put a furnace in, that's uh, like four hours to put a furnace in. To paint the interior of a 1,200 square foot house, you're looking at about four days. So. None of this takes long, but if you don't know, if you're a new investor and you don't know, the contractors will run all kind of plays on you. But when you know, 
you can hold them accountable and you can have something in your uh, agreement to where if they ain't finished by this date, you start deducting money. But having a process in place, it uh, allows you to get finished uh, faster and to get finished on track. They say, a fool in this money is soon parted. Fools acting a fool is food and we starving. See, we the type to bring our own sand to the beach party. Niggas focused on Lori, want pockets like Steve Harvey. Focusing on my target, I'm marginalizing the market. I'm magnifying successes, closing deals in corporate office. More dress shoes than sneakers in my closet. Said I'm all about my business. You can tell by my demeanor when I'm walking. Yeah, I mean it. I'm not Ramon uh, Chooks, um, historical, you know, real estate guy in Atlanta. You know, actually, before I actually met him, I was hearing about him when people uh, were seeing that I was spending a lot of time in Atlanta, especially when I bought the house. His name kept popping up, like, you gotta hook up with Ramon, you gotta hook up with Ramon. So he been doing his thing in Atlanta for a long time. Where you? I told you they broke up my truck the other night here. Where were you? Uh, um, College Park, ATL, a uh, restaurant called ATL. They broke in my the, back the, window. The, the black truck. The big black truck. Yeah, they, you know, they, they you know, yeah. that shit's popular here. That's like, that's like, that's their job every yeah. day. They get up to break and call. And they only was looking for a gun. I had cash right there in plain sight. They didn't lift up the back seat, which is a huge storage bin. Normally I had tools back there, the center console. They didn't even open that up. They went straight to the glove compartment. Nothing there. Get out. Burnt out. $500 window. Even though the valet paid for it. Oh, it was in valet. Yeah, it was a valet. <laughs> they paid for it. They they paid Safe Flight right then and there. They came and fixed it yesterday. Yeah, they now you talking about a popular job? Yeah. Breaking in cars. Yeah. So they go through Buckhead, man. I don't even know how they go through a whole garage mm -hmm. and take all the tires and rims off in a 10 minute period. They got crews. Crews. And the right tools. And you shoot the hell out of all of them though. I know that when they yeah. start when them when them governors start talking crazy about that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, I understand it, bro. You yeah. violating people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But nothing. So what's the situation with this one, bro? So uh, I bought it about three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, they just the uh, it was a um, divorce situation. Okay. So we gave them a week to clean it out. Mm -hmm. They it was from top to bottom, top mm -hmm. to bottom, full of stuff. So you they cleaned it out, or you had to clean it out? No, they cleaned it out. I told them oh, we, we had to hold back because I wasn't gonna buy it. It was going to foreclosure. Mm. So I was, I, you know, we were four days before. So we scrambling to get it done. And like I told them, I said we'll stop the foreclosure. Mm hmm. But y'all got to clean it out. You're it was not right. Yeah, yeah. You See, gotta... I cleaned out the properties. That's a no. We, so what we did was we just held five thousand dollars back till okay. they finished it, and then when y'all okay. finish it, you get your five thousand. Okay. Right. And so the lady, I came over here because we were gonna charge them a hundred dollars a day after that yeah. seventy-two hours, right? Because mm -hmm. they were like, we can get it out in seventy-two hours. Because I don't want to be stuck with all that stuff. Okay. Because that was three cans full of stuff in this mm -hmm. house: backyard, forty front, yard, down car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. Um, it took them probably seven days after that to get it done, but I came over here because I can tell, you know, they need the money. Yeah. And the agent kept calling me. So when I came, the older lady walked up to me and was like, yeah, we're not finished, but, and I was like, damn, this look rough. That's her and her daughter. Her daughter's yeah. probably 30, she probably mm -hmm. 60. And so I just gave them a couple of days and we didn't take the yeah, for them. We just wanted to clean out. So once they released some more money to them, um, I sent them get some help over here and they got it mm -hmm. cleaned out. So it looks better now. Mm -hmm than what it looked when we first mm. bought it. Well, well, how much you pay? Uh, we all in at one, right now, 135. what they go for in there? 260. Uh -huh. Yeah, about 260. So my original, you know, it's the, what I call the trifecta for this mm -hmm. one. I can wholesale it, I can just sell it just like this. And we, yeah. got, a, we got some offers that later on to close next week on it. Okay. So I'm looking at that, mm -hmm. we can fix it, light rehab, rental because mm -hmm. you know we still got a rental shortage around here mm. or we can flip it because it's still in the affordable housing at 260 yeah. range mm -hmm. uh, one just sold for 280 up the street but it had two car garages but okay. it's 400 square feet less so on on that one it's just this room right here where mm. when they built those with the two car garage they just pull right up to that mm. door you, you see you. what i'm saying right i see it but I on this it. one if you look at a lot of them they yeah. enclosed this see over there right I and see made it. it a family room or a full bedroom i see it yeah you know, the developer was kind of taking yeah, the picture. So this house right. is 
uh, close to 1,700 square feet, mm -hmm. whereas the ones with two car garages are 1,400 square feet. Mm -hmm. They sell them for a little bit more because, you know, two car garages. But it seems like, but some people prefer more space and park outside. We in the land there. But all, somebody but, can park in, somebody can park out. All of the ones that are sold with the one car garage mm -hmm. have been in that two. 45 to 260 range. Mm, that's interesting. The two car garage has been at 280, 270, 280. Mm, that's very interesting. With smaller square footage. Mm, that's interesting. Basement, right? No, nah, no basement. So when they bought it, the, the ex husband, because we called him, mm -hmm. one of the pipes burst in the laundry room, mm -hmm. and he just didn't have the money to fix it the right way. So mm -hmm. they ran a pipe out right there. But, mm -hmm. you know, we done, they had it checked out. So again, if I flip it, I'm going to put some laminate, new laminate floors all over the place. Maybe, right? Yeah, these real wood. Council, they are <laughs> this wood, this a real wood floor, right? Yeah, they got um they pre-fitted though. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, right, I see that. But I mean that's not a bad thing. It really works. Correct. If I gotta renovate it, you know, I get excited about renovating it. Right. What is this, bro? I, I don't know. Oh, I thought it was something. Some kind of water I'm retention. down here, yeah. Yeah, some, no. Some, some, some out of grill or something. A grill? No. Soil, salmon. Yeah, I some kind of recycling or something. Oh, so probably what they was doing with their gardening with a no meat, fats, bone. So what they call it, um, compost, maybe? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. probably compost. what it is. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Look, classic composer. That's what it's called, composer. Yeah, so you come out and throw everything in there, some meat. And then they put it in the garden or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the you know, like great. when we see, like, Cleveland, we understand we can find multifamily. You know what I mean? Here, man, when stuff hit the market, people go crazy, man. Like, literally. Like, you know, you got a lot of stuff in town because in town where it was at some point before the 80s, blacks didn't really come out of in town. It was like everybody else, inner city was blacks, mm -hmm. outskirts was whites. When we were kids, when I was a kid, coming past, if y'all came down 20, coming past County Road was like, nah, bro, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's reverse. Yeah. And you call it gentrification, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. but in town is the hot spots and they moved everybody, everybody moved to the outskirts. Mm -hmm. See, Atlanta doesn't have housing projects no more. It used to. We were the first city with them. Yeah. First city to get rid of all of them. Hold on. All of them are gone? All of them. That one next to um, Atlanta uh, prison is gone? So on behind Atlanta prison. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're closing it down. Okay. Yeah. And they technically didn't call it housing project, even though Thomas, you're talking about Thomas Bill. I don't remember. Yeah, Thomas Bill. Yeah. I just used to look at it when I was in the camp every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so what they did was, though, which is, I ain't going to contribute all of the bad in the neighborhood, but imagine you from the east side and you from east side projects too, but y'all move us into a neighborhood beside each other. Me and you might not dislike, but our grandparents don't like each other. Mm -hmm. So then they made the, the suburbs get bad. Mm -hmm. Riverdale, Lathonia, Conyers, Covington, you know, it got real bad for a minute. And the inner city is, is still tough, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So, mm -hmm. but that's why you look at a lot of the issues. Mm -hmm. Like with Riverdale, you know, everybody was kind of running from Riverdale because mm -hmm. that's what they did. They took everybody and put them. Okay, we're going to tell them Techwood, Boyne Homes, Carver Homes. You got to think, 20 years ago, within a 10 mile radius, we probably had eight to 10 pro housing projects. Mm -hmm. So you can compare that to any major city, not even New York. They couldn't, they, nothing like it. It's crazy. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you know, we don't like each other. I, grew, I, I was born in this project. I don't like you because you were born in that project. Mm -hmm. So they kept a problem in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, but now, when they tore them down, they tore them down and rebuilt, um, I'm going to say they rebuilt live, work places. Mm -hmm. And then they built, they built apartments back, mm -hmm. but they built where you may be paying a dollar and I may be paying 1500 mm -hmm. But what it's supposed to do is, I'm the 1500 guy, you don't, I don't know you the dollar person, but I get up and go to work. So now, you say, damn, everybody went to work today. So now my mentality says, I'm supposed to get up and go to work today, mm -hmm. as opposed to everybody sitting on the front porch. Or they, everybody went to work, now I'm about to break it on. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But yeah, this one, this one of the easy ones. Wow. We don't get that dirty over here.
Yeah, for sure. And like you said, I'm using your philosophy sometimes. I listen sometimes. All right, all right. I mean, <laughs> football about this. Get up out of here. Salad. Uh, we gon' put this work in. All I spit is fire, bitch. I'm earth wind. We paper chase cause money make the earth spin. Before you purchase burgers and purses and get the splurges, make sure you make investments that's worth it. Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. I don't see the lockbox on 131st. Tonight house. It's in the bushes, like. Uh to the left or to the right? To, to the, to the left. In the bushes? It's poison ivy right here. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Who are you with? I'm by myself. Oh, this poison ivy. Oh, oh, yeah. my. This is definitely a, a good spot. Look in the garage, though. The garage is the worst thing. The garage? The house, the house is cool, that's so what I told her. I spent too hard, $800. I told him, the garage is the worst. Go look in the garage. Okay. I got my big boots on. There's glass on the front porch. Yeah, there's a glass broke on the front porch. There's a little heater right here in the home. She didn't keep the gas on over there. I told her. She didn't call, today you didn't call you to get the gas on in two days. This door was unlocked. Lock. It's an easy fix. Yeah, this hardwood is good on this floor. Yeah. Hard, good hardwood. Yeah, pull this carpet up. Some tile in the bathroom. New vanity. Tear all that out over the yeah. shower. Oh, you got a solid house tonight. Yeah, that white shower shit new in there. Okay. Now these cabinets, this need to come out. This old, old. Check out Tyson cabinets will have to come out. Yeah, this gotta come out. You, this a full gut right here. All this have to come out. Hmm? Sure. I told her she wants you to just clean this cabinet. Yeah, bring this whole cabinet. What about the breaker box? Anybody check the box? Okay. New breaker box. New breaker box. So it's waterproof this. Ah! We don't retire that story. <laughs> What's out there? Yeah, Joe. Well, you got to retire that story, man. Nah, Joe. So, Shawan, we didn't actually grow up together. He's from St. Clair down, no, St. Clair. No, no, I'm, no. From See, that's, that's not, I'm from 79. I'm from 79. His grandmother lived on 83rd. That don't count. He wasn't, he couldn't never hang around with us. But anyway, he had a girlfriend, and then he went to juvenile detention center. So when you go to juvenile detention center, you ain't got no girlfriend no more, right? And he couldn't understand that. So when he came home, I had a girlfriend because I didn't go to juvenile detention center when he went. And so, funny thing, my, one of my homies walking up Superior, we walking up Superior, <laughs> there's three of us, we walking up Superior, so the bus stop, it got our attention because the bus stop by a, a field, like it's nothing but field over, ain't no bus stop over, so we wonder like, man, why the bus stop by the field, so the bus stop. So, two dudes get off the bus. He wanted to do it, said eyebrows connected. He still had on the, the detention center uniform. Then the other doc, guy had like a, a karate like jacket with some karate shoes, right? They start running across the street. He start running across the street. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, we got through that. 
Once I got into the real estate game, got out the jungle, got into the real estate game, I started to, you know, started to share the information, you know, with other people that was, you know, still in the jungle, started to share the real estate information. So I turned Shawana on to his first uh, investment property. And uh, yeah. it's, it's been a wrap every since. Yeah, 1994. Like we two guys that come from, from the street, like I've been to detention home, Shawana's a detention home. I've been to state prison, federal prison, Shawan, federal prison. But it's something like how we changed our lives around, like from the streets to, you know, uh, drug activities and everything that come with that to now, like we both real estate investors. Uh, Shawan is on both sides, actually a real estate investor and has a general uh, contracting business. And it's just, uh, it's a blessing to, 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 to be alive and to be on this side uh, yeah. of doing something legitimate and actually adding value to the community right. versus uh, destroying. You know, you, everybody sold drugs. Right. So we, everybody, you know, followed everybody that was selling drugs and started selling drugs. Right. So when I seen B doing something positive, I followed suit. So it ain't nothing wrong with following suit as long right. as it's positive. <laughs>
is she need to get the alarm activated or get an alarm over there. Okay, and just told her secure the property. Right, it looks like uh, they cut some of the copper in the basement when I was there looking. Oh, okay. I didn't stay down there too long. There was a cat coming through the window. Really? Yeah. Oh, that, that basement window? Yes. Yeah. Just hurry now. Uh, I'm gonna, I told Chuck is gonna start the clean out. So I told him to make sure that window is secure. The house was broken in. Somebody broke in. You hear me? Yeah. Somebody broke in. So you need to get this house secure. That's the first thing you're supposed to do anyway. So I don't know how they got through this door. Send you a picture. The side window is open. The glass block is the bin is broke. You hear him? Oh, there you go. There you go. Ma, I just took the picture. Why are you over there looking at a cat? Just making sure he's he watching the property, too. <laughs> I guess that's keeping the mice and the rats out of there. All right, so get on your job. daughter is 11 um you know the beautiful thing about children at that age you know they're they can't remember a lot right so when she was born her first six seven years of her life i was i was in it i i, I was running restaurants i was opening restaurants and i was doing real estate so she you know i barely seen her barely spent any real quality time we did the family vacations once a year you know we did the weekend one day a week but it's funny, what's funny about it is because she can't remember her dad working every day. You know, you, you ask her now, she don't know really what, she just know I'm a real estate investor. But she never remembered me working in the restaurants and all. And that was just three and a half years ago that I did that. So that was that was a blessing on my, on my behalf that in her eyes, you know, that I'm available whenever she need me to be available. You know, we, we, we spend a lot of time together and we do things together and I can do whatever we, you know, whatever we want to do, I can do it. Listen, slow down, slow down. Remember to reset, hold the brake. Before you start it, I need you to stop. Tie your shoes up, put your jacket on right. You know, because even though I actually own businesses, um, at one point in time, I had six restaurants. And at that time, I probably had 12 to 14 properties that was for, for rent or was rented. And I was flipping, you know, three or four houses a year. It didn't feel like a business. It felt like a job because I had to I had to be there at a certain time. You know, I couldn't leave until the job was done. That's really People, you know, I try to point that out to especially small business owners. They got the game messed up, man. That's really, it's really just a job. That's not a business. A real true business is whether you get out to bed or not, whether you in Dubai or Africa or Atlanta or Miami or a boat for a month, your business is going to continue to run and bring in income whether you're there or not. That's, those are real businesses. Anything other than that is really a job. The goal is to get to real businesses. When you have a real business, it's going to run and bring in income whether you're there or not. Whether you're there or not. I'm not knocking anybody, but just we have to uh, re-educate ourselves about what we thought we knew on what the real is. You know what I mean? You guaranteed any of these major corporations, the people at the top, whether they walk into the office any day of the week, we still gonna buy their product. Those are real businesses. Those are real businesses, period. And that's what we have to get to. And that was my goal. That was the goal from day one. The day that I opened Zanzibar, I knew that I was trying to turn it into a business as soon as possible. Mm -hmm.